Mercury. You're standing on Mercury, staring at a landscape that looks exactly like Earth's moon. Desolate, scarred with craters, silent as a graveyard. This place has double sunrises and sunsets. If this sounds magical, think again, because Mercury is the solar system's ultimate death trap. Let's start with the safest spot, the poles, where your spacecraft landed inside craters like Nawahi or Kandinsky. Too bad you're not here to sightsee. The planet's gravity feels like Mars, 38% of Earth's. So you could leap three times higher, only if you could survive. On the day side, the sun hangs 2.5 times larger in the sky, blasting the ground to 430 degrees Celsius, hotter than a pizza oven. A day on Mercury lasts about 59 Earth days, and its year, just 88 Earth days. So if you land at sunrise, you'll roast for six weeks before sunset even arrives. With no atmosphere to block radiation or trap heat, you're exposed to solar radiation roughly seven times stronger than Earth's. Your lungs collapse, your eyes dry to dust. Your skin erupts in unbearable heat within two minutes. In 10 minutes, you're delirious. Organs cook, your heart stops, and you're a charcoal lump in under 15 minutes. Now flip to the night side, minus 180 degrees Celsius. No air means no heat lingers, just pure airless ice. Fingers numb first, then toes. Violent shivering sets in. Muscles lock like rusted chains. Hypothermia drags you into delirium. In 30 minutes, your body gives up. Shivering stops, a terrible sign. An hour in, your heart freezes mid-beat. You die solid as a statue, preserved in eternal darkness. Venus. Your next stop is Earth's evil twin, Venus. Same size, similar rocks, but literally hell. This planet is hot enough to melt metals like zinc, lead, and tin, while boasting a poisonous carbon dioxide atmosphere. The best place to land on Venus might be a less mountainous, least hazardous plane in Aphrodite Terra. Venus spins backwards, creating a Venusian day that runs for 243 Earth days, the longest of any planet in our solar system. If you thought being farther from the sun would make Venus more hospitable than Mercury, that's cute, but actually no. In fact, Venus is our solar system's hottest planet. Its thick atmosphere, made up of 96% carbon dioxide, creates a runaway greenhouse effect that pushes surface temperatures to a searing 465 degrees Celsius while toxic clouds of sulfuric acid hover above. And yes, it probably smells like rotten eggs. But the real killer here isn't just the heat, it's the crushing pressure. Picture being 3,000 feet underwater on Earth. That's the kind of pressure you'll face on Venus's surface. Roughly 92 times Earth's atmospheric pressure. In less than five seconds, that force compresses your bones, muscles, and skin. Blood vessels burst and organs begin to fail. Your lungs crushed flat, leading to rapid suffocation, and your pulse halts permanently. But let's say you're wearing a magic suit. Remember from your Mercurian expedition how skin burns instantly, like being trapped in molten lava? In that case, you would barely have 15 agonizing minutes to live. Even if you escape that, taking just one breath of carbon dioxide-laden air triggers immediate blackout and suffocation within five minutes. Still alive? Now, the sulfuric acid clouds dissolve your skin and tissues with severe chemical burns, eating through your suit and leaving no chance for existence. Mars. You reach Mars, which might seem more promising than Mercury or Venus, as it's still in Sun's habitable band. A one-way journey takes roughly half a year to reach this red planet, named for its iron-rich, rusted soil. This dusty wasteland is a masterclass in false promises. Imagine spending six grueling months crammed in a spaceship, only to land near the equator, the so-called habitable corridor with subsurface ice, and realize the planet offers nothing but cruelty. Step outside without a suit, and you'd last only two minutes, just like you would in the vacuum of space. Mars's atmosphere is 95% carbon dioxide with mere traces of oxygen, so you can't breathe. As carbon dioxide floods your blood, you'd experience panic-inducing breathlessness before losing consciousness and succumbing to asphyxia. After the initial asphyxiation, if you somehow pulled through, brace yourself for Mars's brutal 687-day year. Though Mars has seasons thanks to its axial tilt, temperatures average minus 63 degrees Celsius and can plunge to a bone-chilling minus 125 degrees Celsius at night. Such extreme cold triggers rapid hypothermia. Your limbs stiffen like iron rods, and confusion takes hold in moments. And just when you think it can't get worse, remember, Mars lacks a magnetic field. Cosmic radiation bombards you around the clock, frying your skin, warping your cells, and dragging out your death over days or even weeks with relentless nausea, burns, and slow-motion organ failure. Then, there are the dust storms, planet-wide apocalyptic tempests. 
For months, howling winds lashed the surface, blasting sand at hurricane speeds, shredding equipment, clogging air filters, and burying any hope of rescue. Jupiter If Jupiter were the size of a soccer ball, Earth would shrink to about the size of an olive. Its rapid rotation gives it the shortest day among the planets, clocking in at only about 10 hours. This largest planet in our solar system takes around 12 Earth years, or roughly 4,307 Earth days, to orbit the Sun. You don't land on Jupiter, you fall into a swirling, hostile gas giant with no solid surface. At the outer edge, the temperature is about minus 145 degrees Celsius. But before you even reach that frigid level, you encounter Jupiter's colossal magnetosphere, a structure so immense it spans 150 times the planet's width. Entering this region, the solar system's most intense radiation strikes you, an onslaught equivalent to 10 million dental x-rays, frying your electronics and shredding your DNA. This lethal radiation field is so powerful that NASA's Juno probe required a titanium vault for protection. Your skin blisters, and your body starts mutating, sealing your fate in mere minutes. Even if the radiation doesn't kill you instantly, gravity, now 2.5 times that of Earth, drags you deeper. You breach the ammonia cloud tops, where the sky burns in candy-striped oranges and whites. Winds scream at 423 kilometers per hour, propelling you toward the Great Red Spot, a gigantic storm 1.3 times Earth's width that has been raging since the 1600s. Ammonia crystals slice your suit like razors. When the pressure hits 10 times that of Earth, your ribs crack, your lungs compress beyond function, and your tissues compress beyond repair. Deadly lightning, the most powerful in the solar system, capable of powering an entire Earth city, lashes out around you. Assuming you somehow push past this chaos, you reach the metallic hydrogen region, where the temperature soars to 5,000 degrees Celsius. Here, hydrogen gas transforms into a searing sea of liquid metal hotter than sun's surface, with pressures peaking at 2 million bars, like sinking into 500 Mariana trenches at once. Your skeleton implodes, your organs liquefy, and what remains of you dissolves into the conductive sludge, fueling Jupiter's magnetic field. This metallic hydrogen is unique to Jupiter, generating a magnetism that could swallow planets whole. If you manage to reach the core, if it even exists, you'd encounter a hypothesized mix of molten rock and diamond, compressed by a staggering 100 million bars of pressure, equivalent to 160,000 cars stacked on your body. Scientists debate whether the core is solid or a supercritical fluid, but either way, it's a fiery graveyard at about 24,000 degrees Celsius. Saturn The solar system's crown jewel is a gas giant with rings made of shattered moons, supersonic winds, and a core so strange to defy physics. But before you take this fatal dive, note your first challenge. Saturn's rings consist of billions of ice and rock particles orbiting at 50,000 miles per hour. The main rings span a distance comparable to the gap between Earth and the Moon. These rings aren't solid. Some fragments are smaller than a grain of sand, while others tower taller than skyscrapers. Even if you overcome that, the extreme cold at minus 200 degrees Celsius will flash freeze your lungs. Before reaching the cloud tops, you encounter Saturn's magnetosphere, a vast magnetic bubble that subjects you to intense radiation similar to Jupiter's. Now, plummeting into the upper atmosphere, you're hit by ammonia blizzards and winds exceeding 1,800 kilometers per hour, three times the force of a Category 5 hurricane as pressure mounts to 10 times that of Earth's. Your ribs are squeezed while the sky glows a sickly yellow, illuminated by storms larger than continents. At the North Pole, a hexagonal vortex, a six-sided storm wider than Earth, swallows you whole. Saturn's hexagon has persisted for 40 years, and scientists still don't know why it resembles a stop sign from hell. Assuming you persist and descend deeper, you face a scalding sea of liquid metal at 8,000 degrees Celsius, Hydrogen gas compressed into a fluid with temperatures rivaling the sun's fiery exterior and pressures surging to 2 million bars, enough to implode your body into goo. Remarkably, Saturn's density is so low that it could float in water if you could find a bathtub the size of Texas. If, at all, you manage to reach the core, scientists theorize it rains diamonds, carbon pounded into gems by the extreme atmospheric conditions. All this, of course, only matters if you weren't already crushed, frozen, and dissolved by the atmosphere. Uranus. Embarking on a voyage to Uranus means traveling 2.6 billion kilometers from Earth, a distance where sunlight takes about 2 hours and 40 minutes to arrive. Uranus, an ice giant, has the coldest atmosphere of any planet in our solar system. Your first encounter, two sets of rings greet you, inner rings that are dark and gray, and outer rings that glow blue and red. It also has 27 moons, 
named after characters from the works of Shakespeare and Alexander Pope. Like Prospero from The Tempest and Cordelia from King Lear, a Uranian day measures almost 17 hours, but a year is roughly 84 Earth years, meaning you'd only celebrate one birthday in your lifetime. This ice giant experiences extreme seasons, with each pole enduring 42 years of unbroken sunlight, followed by 42 years of darkness. As you descend through Uranus's hazy upper atmosphere, methane stains the sky a toxic blue. Winds lash at 900 kilometers per hour, but the cold is the true executioner. At minus 224 degrees Celsius, your suit shatters like glass and your lungs instantly crystallize. A few thousand kilometers beneath the cloud tops, pressure surges to one million bars, crushing you in your fatal plunge into a layer of hot ice. Water, ammonia, and methane compressed into a supercritical fluid. It's not solid, not liquid. Just a 4,600 degrees Celsius sludge that dissolves your body. Dive further and you'll encounter a hailstorm of diamonds. As methane fractures under crushing pressure, carbon atoms bond into diamonds that pelt you at bullet speed, shredding your remains and carbonizing them into glittering gemstones. With 18.5% of your body being carbon, you'll achieve the ultimate body transformation, from a human to a high-speed diamond bullet. Anyway, since you've evaded death so far and reached the core, you'll find a molten rock sphere smaller than Earth, crushed under 8 million bars of pressure boiling at lava temperatures of 5,000 degrees Celsius. But you're long gone, vaporized into an ionized mist. Neptune since one Neptunian year extends for 164 Earth years, you'd never reach your birthday on Neptune. Neptune is an ice giant, but with no solid surface or ice sheet to land on, so you don't stand on it, you fall into its depths. Yet, if you could somehow stand there, you'd be surprised. The force of gravity is almost identical to that on Earth. Neptune resembles Uranus in many ways, and even experiences diamond rain. But it boasts one feature Uranus lacks, relentless winds more intense than anywhere else in the solar system. Keeping a spacecraft stationary above Neptune is nearly impossible, as its upper atmosphere greets you with winds of up to 2,100 kilometers per hour, faster than a jet fighter. If you ever braved these annihilating winds and made it to the core, you'd encounter superionic ice. It forms at temperatures soaring to 6,700 degrees Celsius, where water molecules fracture into a state in which oxygen crystallizes, while hydrogen ions flow like a liquid. Pluto Pluto lies in the Kuiper Belt. Once considered the ninth planet, it's now a dwarf planet, smaller than Earth's moon, with temperatures plunging as low as minus 240 degrees Celsius, making it even colder than Neptune. Pluto is one of the only places besides Earth that boasts white-peaked mountains, though these peaks aren't made of snow. They're composed of methane snow. You collapse onto Sputnik Planitia, a heart-shaped glacier of nitrogen ice spanning 600 miles where the ice flows like lava, engulfing you in cracks deeper than the Grand Canyon. Your survival lasts mere seconds in this frozen wasteland, as the extreme cold would freeze you solid in 10 seconds. 